Okay, so last week I released a video that discussed how Dollar Shave Club, a startup in 2011 or 2012, uh, outplayed Gillette, a $50 billion company. Now, at its core, was the direct response marketing approach uh, employed by the CEO uh, to rapidly build a paying user base. At the core of that direct response marketing was one very successful short form sales video, which I'm sure we have all seen at least once. This video had such an impact that Dollar Shave Club, uh, that the Dollar Shave Club website crashed from too much traffic in the first 48 hours uh, of the video going live. In the first few days, Dollar Shave Club managed to gain 12,000 new subscribers to their Dollar Shave Club and uh, and it set the business on a path to, uh, to massive rapid growth. This video was one heck of a success and if we're going to talk about any um, successful short form direct response video, this is the one that we should be looking at. So let's break it down and see why exactly it worked. What direct response tools and strategies was uh, being used in this video? So come with me and uh, let's jump into it as we break it down. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of dollarshaveclub.com. What is dollarshaveclub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Okay, so the first thing that, that, that stood out to us when I was watching this is you always want to look at how a video begins. Um, this is the same with any form of direct response marketing is capturing attention right up front. And, and honestly, I was a bit surprised when I watched back over this because right up front they start with their offer and this is quite a little bit different. You don't, you don't always see this. Usually um, the lead section tends to start with uh, in, in short form um, direct response sales videos. Usually the intro section starts with like a problem solution or validating something that your audience has seen before or just something that is um, that is really attention grabbing before sort of leading into the lead and into the, the, the heart of the message. However, in this instance, the offer on the table is actually quite interesting. It, it is something which is going to capture attention and it's clear that they decided just to go straight for the heart of it to keep things simple and, um, and, and, and begin their sales message there. And in direct response marketing, you want to get a direct response from your marketing and here Dollar Shave Club has made the offer uh, and the action the central point of the entire video. Now, the humor comes second and is delivered in the, the, the reasons to take action section as we'll see in a moment. Okay, so let's jump back into it. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Okay, so before we keep going there, um, this is punchy, it's funny, and, uh, and, and that's intentional. Now, when you hear that the razors delivered to your door are one dollar, the what's the first thing that comes to mind? The, the first thing that comes to mind is they must be terrible razors. I mean, we've all seen cheap razors before, and that's not really something that's going to excite your viewers. And um, and and it's clear that that the folks at Dollar Shave Club they knew this. They knew that this was going to be one of their their first and and main objections that uh, that's going to come up when they mention this offer. It's like dollar razors. No thanks. Um, so they address this right up front. They do it in a punchy and humorous way. Um, but as far as a, as, a, as a sales and marketing tool, they are addressing the core objection and they go really hard at this as we'll see in a moment. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. People make decisions uh, emotionally first and then use logic to back it up. And here the two layers of logic are used to back up the, uh, the statement that the, uh, about the razor's quality. So he doesn't just drop the F-bomb and, and say that the razors are great. He then backs it up with logic, all clothed in a bit of humor as well. Well, um, this also doubles as a bit of a jab at their competition, which I am actually a bit of an advocate for when done right. Okay, let's jump back into it. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up. 
Okay, so he's still laboring on the blade quality. Clearly this is a big objection or a big potential objection for his target audience. So he's led with the offer. It's $1, we'll ship it to your door and the quality is good, the quality is good, the quality is good. So he's really laboring on that. And, um, and here, and exaggerating the absurdity of the alternatives is a nifty comedic uh, device. Um, also commonly used by the folks at the Harmon Brothers in, in their productions as well. Or maybe you're thinking, do I have to buy fiber fix? Mm -hmm. Can't I just use 100 times more duct tape? Sure, you could totally do that. However, this is also a common tool that, that you'll see in other forms of sales letters and sales material. In his book, No Be a Sales Success, Dan Kennedy talks about comparing apples to oranges. And um, uh, to, 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 do, to do that uh, as a tool to substantiate and contextualize your offer. And a good example of this in other forms of, uh, of, of sales material is uh, Ramit Sethi's sales letters. You'll, you'll usually see at the bottom of his sales letters the, the question posed, um, are there any other alternatives to this product? And, uh, and there he says things like, uh, sure, you could buy my course on how to start a business for $1,000 uh, where I teach you everything I know, or you could go and get an MBA which will cost you three years and $100,000. Now, technically that's an apples to oranges comparison. His course isn't 100% the same as an MBA, but he's using that comparison there and, and it's effective. It makes the $1,000 course sound really affordable and logical compared to going out and getting an entire MBA. And that's, that's, that is a device that you can use in all kinds of different places. Again, here he uses it and, and exaggerates it and, and adds his layer of humor to it, which is awesome. But at the core is, the, um, is that sales technique. Okay, let's jump back into it. Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. Okay, um, now that seems, that seems really random there, but what it actually is, is a call to action clothed in humor. And that, that call to action is stop paying too much for your raises, we're gonna ship it straight to you. So take action and jump over and join the club. Um, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> and the, the humor is really disarming here. Um, and we'll discuss a bit more about how the humor works at the end of the video. Um, that the cool thing here is he is using a call to action. This is what distinguishes direct response marketing from branding marketing, and that is a, a clear call to action, and he really labors on this, as we'll see in a moment. Let's jump back into it. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. <laughs> Okay, um, another log logical reason to change the way you purchase razors. So he's throwing the logic in there as well. I'm again clothed in in humor. Now he's got something that he wants you to do, and he's giving you layers of reasons to take action and go and do it. He's pushing you to jump over uh, to their website. And just having a call to action at the end of the video isn't enough. Just throwing up your logo and your website, that's not enough. Your whole video should be crafted around getting that action and providing reasons to take that action and to take that action now. And he's done that very intentionally. Again, this is really disarming because it's it's funny. The guy's got a lot of humor. Um, but at its core, he, he, he's trying to get you over to his website and that's really intentional. Now, clothing and humor is is brilliant. Um, and executing that is is not easy, but that is what he's, he's doing uh, at this section in the video. Okay, let's jump back into it. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're gonna stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are dollarshaveclub.com and the party is on. <laughs> okay, let's stop that before it gets into the music. I know that's the funny punchline at the end, but um, YouTube will, uh, will pummel me if I have their, have their music on this video. Now, the final call to action is put a bunch of money back in your own pocket. Now, this uses a, another sales device, make your product pay for itself. And, and this can be done in, in most other industries. Um, the old example is the person selling pots and pans and, and that person emphasizing that if you cook at home more often, you'll save X on takeout food and these pans will pay for themselves in three months. So this can be done in, in any industry. It's a very, very powerful sales tool. And uh, yeah, they've, they've held no punches here, throwing the money around uh, in, in front of everyone, having a bit of fun. Um, 
This removes the risk and makes it easier for your prospect to say yes, right? Okay, let's jump back into this last bit. Clever, shave time, shave money. That ended, uh, that's ended up being one of their, uh, that's pretty much their slogan that they've stuck with uh, for the last six or seven years. Um, but you'll notice again, there is another call to action. One last call to action. So technically there was four calls to action there. There was the offer up front, overcoming the initial objections, and then call to action, call to action, call to action, call to action. Really wants you to take action. And it was effective. Um, their website crashed because they had so many people getting over to their website. They had 12,000 new um, new subscribers to their Dollar Shave Club. So, uh, but, but this is what distinguishes direct response from branding. Uh, someone who's running a branding campaign um, is, is just sort of throwing a message out there and hoping that it sticks and hoping that it will impact you somewhere down the line in the future to buy their product. Direct response is about head over and take action on this offer. Okay, so conclusion, this video is built upon old school direct response marketing principles clothed in humor and is a great example of um, successful short form direct response sales video. Now, what you may have heard about this commercial is it only costed uh, $4,500 to produce and this is correct. However, what you may not have heard is that the CEO wrote and starred in the production himself. And, uh, and, and both of these roles are actually what usually take up most of your production budget. That is the, the strategy, the copy, and the acting talent. So it's, it's, as far as production goes, those, those things are what is really critical and those things are what usually takes up most of your budget. So when people talk about him uh, having been able to produce this on the cheap, um, I think it's a little bit of a misnomer because he brought those core skills to the table himself. So massive credit to this guy. Um, the other thing is the, the CEO, Michael Durbin, uh, had a background in sales and marketing and he's, he's drawn clearly on that skill set and that understanding of direct response marketing here. Um, he also um, he had also studied sketch and improv for eight years at uh, the Upright Citizens Brigade Training Center in New York City. So this gives him a, a unique skill set to execute this commercial uh, effectively and on the cheap. So yes, he did produce this for just four thousand five hundred dollars. However, he did he, he had his own face on the screen, which is you know didn't need to pay for any acting talent. Um, and he, he, he wrote the thing himself. And both of those things are what usually take up most of your production budget. Now to contextualize that, you can contrast that with, uh, with the Harmon Brothers who produce uh, short form uh, humorous sales videos, uh, like what you would have seen for Squatty Potty and, and Fiber Fix. Um, they charge half a million dollars um, according to a, a Forbes article back in 2014. So they're probably uh, charging even more now than they were back then and they hire um, comedy actors um, and, and they also hire um, uh, copywriters and, and they collaborate with like a whole team of, um, of, of specialists to execute. Um, so yeah, it's, it is a bit of a, a, a kind of a bit of a misnomer that, uh, that he was able to produce this uh, so cheap and on the fly to, to execute something um, effectively that is humorous, that, that, that uses direct response principles. Um, the Harmon brothers are charging half a million dollars to execute their ones. So, and that's because they are drawing on uh, people who've got the proven skills. I believe they've got, um, uh, they, they primarily use um, comedy actors from, is it Comedy Central, I think? Um, correct me if I'm wrong there, but you'll see those faces appearing in their ads um, and it works. Because as much as it looks effortless on screen when it's all chopped up and, uh, and you're watching it, executing something like this is actually really tricky. And, uh, and my advice, if you are working on something like this, either for yourself or, or, or as um, a video producer or a copywriter or even, even an actor, is to find the right talent to collaborate with. Um, especially when it comes to the writers and the acting. This is similar to when we watch a big blockbuster uh, film. If the acting and, uh, and, and the writing talent is awesome, a lot can be forgiven. And this is, this is exactly the same with this context here. One really great example, I mean, this is this is a great example of that. I mean, in, it, it, is, it is shot and edited in, in such a, um, 
uh, on the cheap way. However, the, it was written well and uh, it was acted really well by the CEO who had both of those skill sets himself to bring them to the table. The other example is, um, if you can find it on the internet, is the Harmon Brothers, one of their very first uh, productions that they produced for, uh, wow, I think it's called Aura Brush or something like that. And um, it's clearly been edited in something like iMovie. Yeah, but the, the audio tracks that come up in the video are direct from the, uh, the stock stuff from the, the iMovie. Um, folder, but um, but if you go into the story around that, it, it achieved their business objectives. It had awesome impact. It was really quite successful, and it came down to writing it well and uh, and and having uh, the right talent on screen to execute it. And and when you if you can find that one, maybe I'll bring that up in another video. Um, you'll see that that yeah, not only was it like edited in iMovie, but uh, you know the lighting was terrible. His face was all bleached. The the white balance was completely off, but it was effective, it achieved their business goals and that's because they focused on what was important and that was the sales message and the uh, the talent on screen. So that's my take on the, the Dollar Shave Club original commercial and, and how and, and why it was so successful at the time. However, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Is there something that I missed? Is there, uh, is there more to this ad that I'm not aware of? Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you and I'd also love to hear what uh, what commercials you would like me to break down next. I've got a few in my mind that I'd like to tackle, but if you've seen some interesting stuff out there or there's something that, that has been successful, then I would love for you to send it through to me or raise it here in the comment section below so we can dissect them. I'm Steve from Mills Motion. Thank you so much for watching and we'll talk again real soon.